now we'll again continue our discussion uh, on uh, resistance and the different combinations of resistance. Okay. Uh, now uh, we have already discussed uh, about resistance, but we'll just give a further insight into what, uh, uh, how, and what uh, are the various behaviors of resistance under different uh, uh, parameters, under the different combinations of parameters. Okay. Uh, we'll start with. Uh, uh, how the resistance varies uh, with uh, by varying the length or the area of cross section of the conductor okay so how the resistance varies with length and area of cross section of the conductor uh, now we have we already know that uh, the formula for resistance in terms of length and area is given as rho equals uh, r equals rho times length of the conductor divided by area of cross section for the conductor now this rho indicates the specific resistance for the conductor and this l is the length of the conductor whereas a is the area of cross section for the conductor uh, now, uh, here uh, what we mean by varying the length and the area of cross section of the conductor is same as how we apply the potential difference across the resistance. Okay. Uh, what I mean is, uh, suppose uh, we consider a conductor with dimensions as A, B, and C. Okay. And suppose uh, I apply a potential between these two ends of the conductor. Okay. Now, since we have applied the potential between the, the top and the bottom face of the conductor, okay, the length of the conductor in this case, okay, the length would be equal to, the length is the distance between the two ends of the conductor. In this case, it is equal to B. Whereas the area of cross section, area of cross section of the conductor would be perpendicular to the plane containing the current. Okay, so the current is from top to bottom, so the perpendicular face would be the horizontal plane. Okay, that means in this case the area of cross section would be A into C. Okay, that means when the potential difference is applied in such a manner like this, then the resistance for this conductor would be rho times length divided by area of cross section. Uh, now, uh, what we can do is now again we can consider the same block of the material, okay? But we'll change how change the way in which we are applying the potential difference, okay? Now suppose we consider the same block, okay? The material with the same dimensions, okay? With the same material, the dimension is A, B, and C. Okay. And in this case, suppose I apply the potential difference in this manner. Okay. Now, when we apply the potential difference in this manner, in this case, the length of the conductor is A, whereas the area of cross section is perpendicular to the plane containing the current. That is, in this case, the length uh, is A and the area of cross section is B times C. Okay. So, for in this case, length of the conductor is A, whereas the area of cross section is B into C. Therefore, the resistance for this conductor would be rho times A divided by BC. Okay. So, from here we can uh, see that even though the conductors are similar in dimensions, yet when it, the resistance of the conductor depends upon how we apply the potential difference or in other words, it depends upon the length and the area of cross section of the conductor. Okay. Uh, here we can also get one more case okay, wherein uh, we will have the same conductor same conductor with the same dimension okay, as A, B, sorry, A, C and B and uh, the potential difference is applied this manner in the front and the back. Okay. So, when we will be applying the potential difference in this manner, okay, the length of the conductor would be in the plane of the current that is the length of the conductor would be C and the area of cross section would be perpendicular to it. So, area of cross section A it would be A into B. So, in this case, the resistance of this conductor would be rho times length divided by area of cross section. Okay. So, these three results, okay, 
shows the value of resistance for the same material but with different length and area of cross section of the conductor okay so just remember that even though the resistance uh, the conductor appears to be same but the resistance of the conductor depends upon how we apply the potential difference across the ends of the conductor okay. uh, now uh, we can uh, further uh, see how the resistance behave when we stretch the conductor okay what will happen if we will stretch the conductor okay so let's see what happens Let's consider stretching of the wire. Stretching of the wire or the stretching of the conductor. Okay. Now uh, let us assume that we have a conductor whose length is L1 okay, and area of cross section is A1. Now, we are applying a force okay, on it okay, such that the length of the conductor changes to L2. Okay. We are stretching the wire, we are stretching the conductor in such a manner that the length of the conductor now, the new length is L2. Okay. And because of stretching, the area of cross section of the wire will decrease. Okay. So, let us assume that the new area of cross section is A2. Okay. So, the material for both the conductors are same. What we have done is, this is before stretching. This is before stretching. We had the length of the conductor as L1 with the area of cross section as A1. And after stretching the wire, okay, we have a new length of the cross section, a new length of the conductor as L2 and the new area of cross section as A2. Uh, now, what happens in this case is, even though we are stretching the wire, there is change in the dimensions of the uh, wire, but still the volume occupied by the conductor remains the same. Okay? So, what we can do is, we can equate the volume in, on both the cases. Okay? The volume of this conductor, it would be A1 times L1 and the volume of this conductor would be A2 times L2. Okay? Now, since the volume for both the cases remains same, even after stretching the wire, we can say that A1 L1 is equal to A2 times L2. So, from here we can get a relationship between the area of cross section and the length of the conductors. Okay, so, from here we can conclude that L1 times L2 is same as A2 by A1. Okay. Now, this is a very important result which will help us to determine what is the change of the resistance okay, when we stretch the wire. Okay. Now, initially we had the resistance of the wire suppose as R1 and suppose the new resistance of uh, the wire after stretching let it be R2. Okay. Now, we can derive a relationship between R2 and R1 okay, when we stretch the wire by using this condition. Okay, L1 by L2, the ratio of L1 and L2 is equal to the ratio of A2 by A1. Okay. Now, how we can do is we know that the formula for resistance in terms of length and area of cross section is given by is to rho L by A. Okay, this is the general formula. Now, since both these conductors or both the wire wires are made up of same material, so the resistivity or the specific resistance for the material for both these materials will remain the same since the resistivity is the property of material okay, it is independent of length and area of cross section so this resistivity term will remain same for both the cases okay so if we'll take the ratio of the resistance for the first conductor and the second conductor we will be getting r1 divided by r2 equals to rho l1 times a1 divided by the resistance of the second wire after stretching this by A2. Okay. So, we can write it like this L1 by L2 times A2 by A1. Okay. Now, from here we got a relation between the resistance in terms of length and area of cross section. Now, by using this condition, after substituting this okay, in this equation, okay, when we will plug this ratio of area of cross section into this equation, we can get the resistance in terms of the length of the wire. 
Okay, so a2 by a1 can be substituted as, substituted as l1 time divided by l2. So this equation will reduce to l1 by l2 the whole square. Okay, now this is a very important relation. Okay, which suggests that okay, that after stretching the wire, okay, the new resistance of the wire is proportional to the length of the wire, the new length of the wire. Okay, the square of the length of the wire. That is what here we can write as r2 is equal to R1 times L2 by L1 the whole square. Okay, so this is a very important result. Okay, which we should remember for a case when we stretch the wire. Okay, so in general, what we can write from there is that the resistance of a wire, okay, the resistance of the wire after stretching is proportional to its corresponding the square is proportional to square of its corresponding length. Okay, so this is the relation ship between the resistance and the length of the wire. Uh, now we can we could have also done the same uh, relationship in terms of the area of cross section. That is, writing it in terms of length rather than in terms of length, we could have written it in terms of area of cross section. Okay, so this would have been like this could have also been written as same as a two by a one, the whole square. Okay, uh, then uh, suppose if we we'll assume that this is a cylindrical wire, so the area of cross section would be in the form of the circle. Okay, so this area. Uh, if we we'll assume that the radius of uh, initial radius of the conductor is R1, okay, and the initial radius uh, and the final radius after stretching, suppose it is R2, then the areas would be the form of R2 by R1, the whole raised to four. Okay, so now from here, by seeing this equation, what we can see is that that the new resistance, okay, the new resistance is equal to R1 times R1 by R2, the whole raised to four. That means in this case, when we stretch the wire, okay, so the radius of the wire will decrease, and by decrease, by change in the decreasing in the wire uh, radius of the wire, we can we can get an increase in the value of the resistance, okay. Or in general, we can write it like this: that R is inversely proportional to the fourth power of the radius of the cross section, okay, the new resistance of the wire, okay. So these two are the results. Which we will obtain when we will stretch the wire. Okay, so after stretching a wire from length L1 to the new length L2, okay, the change in the resistance is directly proportional to the square of the length, the corresponding length, the new length, or in terms of radius, we can uh, write it like that: the new resistance of the wire is inversely proportional to the fourth power of the resist uh, of the radius of the cross section.